Hello my friends. Oh my god. Hello my beautiful people. I'm so happy you can make it. I am so incredibly excited for today's video, but before then I need to do my intro. So hello my friends. Welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to your new favorite place on the internet. My lovely name is Bella. Why did I say lovely? Okay, anyways, yeah, my name is Bella and I love talking about literally anything that makes me happy, whether it be animes, or manga or books or whatever hyper fixation I'm on. It's just like a combination of everything that makes me happy and that will hopefully make you guys happy as well. For today's video, I really just wanna focus on the books that have shaped 2023 so far. So literally just the best books that I've read this year, whether they be five stars or really, really close to it. Basically, my whole personality has come from all of these books and I just feel like I need to take a moment Moment to appreciate them and you know thank them for being such a huge part of my life and basically shaping my 2023 yes I know that 2023 is not over yet but I feel like it would be so fun to have this video to look back on at the end of the year and then see what other new books I've added to this list we do have a mixture of books here because we have classics we have literary fiction we have contemporary we have a poetry collection which is very exciting we have a romance romance and we have some manga because I mean I feel like if you know me just a tiny bit you know that manga is like a huge percent of my life I love anything that has to do with anime and manga and 2d men <laughs> so yeah it's 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 yeah <laughs> So it's in no particular order, but the very first book that I, of course, have to mention in this video, I have a whole video about it. It's one of my favorite videos that I've done this entire year. And it's literally, God, this book just brought me so much happiness. And uh, I don't know, like just holding it, just seeing all the tabs and just, yeah, it means a lot to me. And that book is, I mean, who is surprised by this turn of events? The Count of Monte Cristo. What can I say that I haven't already said in like my 40 minute or 50 minute video of this wonderful classic? This is basically an incredible epic masterpiece of betrayal and redemption and love and human nature. And it's all set in, I think, 19th century France. So it's all just very rich and very interesting. This is literally a roller coaster of a novel. There are so many emotions that this book is going to make you feel from hatred to anger to love and sadness and grief. It's going to take you through all of the stages of grief. And it's also going to make you feel so many beautiful things that are tainted with a little bit of sadness. And it's just like the lengths that this author goes through to tell us the story of our main character. In my opinion, I think it was just done in such a beautiful, intense, and satisfying and entertaining way. And it's almost so hard to put this book down, even though this has 1,243 pages, even though this is probably one of the longest books that I will ever read in my lifetime. You don't even feel how long it is because the story is so captivating. It's almost like the pages fly by. You honestly don't feel the amount of pages when you're finally like into the story. If you haven't seen my video and you don't really know what the story is about, we're basically following our main character and Mondantes and his life is so beautiful right now he has an incredible girlfriend who he's about to marry he's about to be promoted to captain of his own ship he has a father he has like a nice family like everything is coming up aces for him unfortunately not everybody is going to be happy that you are so happy one of his friends actually makes this whole plot and sends him to prison for 12 years for a crime that he did not commit. Obviously the time that he spent in solitary confinement and the things that he had to feel, the things that he had to experience while he was in prison changed him because before he was this innocent, 
good-natured, pure-hearted type of character. But when he comes out of jail, the only thing that's on his mind is revenge. He wants to find the people that ruined his life and make them pay for it. Because if he can't have the happy life that he was supposed to have, nobody is going to have it. I think one of my favorite things of this book is all of the plot twists that the author comes up with and how original they feel and how they're never obvious. Like you never see them coming. And it's just so exciting because you're constantly at the edge of your seat. You never want to put the book down because you never know what's coming next. And that is just so exciting. And I honestly have never felt that when I've read classic literature before. So before I even picked up this book, I was so intimidated because of the sheer size of it. But honestly, the payoff is so worth it. Oh my goodness. Like this is one of my favorite classics. And I read this in February. I took it with me to my trip to Taiwan. And I think that that's why it means as much to me as it does because yes it's an incredible book but also every time that i see this book it reminds me of all of the days that i spent walking through taiwan and all of the memories that i made over there because i literally took this baby with me everywhere i went to every coffee shop to every park to every town that i visited i took monte cristo with me and whenever i could i would just open up the pages and read through them and i don't know it was just i've never really had a book like that where i look at the book and i'm suddenly transported to the time that i was reading it like the time and place so it just holds a very very special place in my heart and of course it's probably my most heavily annotated book of all time like, come on now. I think I went through like two or three packs of tabs because there was just so much to annotate. It's just such a brilliantly written classic. You want to annotate every single page, basically. If you think I have like the most eloquent of thoughts while reading a classic you you are you would be incorrect actually it's just a fun time i think because i didn't put too much pressure on me to annotate this book as if i were a literature student i just had fun with it and it made the experience 10 times more enjoyable and just overall the time that i read this book the place that i read it in the people that i read it with as well because this was a buddy read i don't know it just it takes me back to such a happy place in my life, which was February 2023. So yeah, The Count of Monte Cristo, my goodness, what a book. If you're interested to know my more in-depth thoughts about this and you know, I go into the characters, who I liked, who I disliked, why I like them so much, I go into the plot and the, the pacing. Like I literally talk about every single thing about this book in my video, so if you're interested, I will be leaving it up here. But yeah, The Count of Monte Cristo is definitely one of the books that will forever mark my 2023. Next up, we have another classic. And like, just looking at it, I'm like, I'm gonna get, you know what I mean? Like, uh. Yeah, this book kind of changed my life low key. Like, I don't wanna be dramatic, but like, let me be dramatic, okay? This next book, I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. And it basically just opened like a can of worms because after I read Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, I was like, okay, I need to read every other book that he's ever written. And you know, some of them were flops. It's okay, I can admit that. But the other books that I've read by him, they've been good. And I just, I love the way that he thinks. I love the way that he sees the world. I love how pessimistic, but also optimistic he is about humans and human nature and the human condition. I love how it's so fun to psychoanalyze his characters because they are so insane and they are so unhinged and they are so relatable. <laughs> If you're relating to a Dostoevsky character, then like babes, I mean, I think it's time to go to therapy, but like in a good way, you know? It's all fun and games here. It's all very silly goofy, but Crime and Punishment was the very first book of Dostoevsky that I read, and I didn't know what to expect when I went into it, but I surely wasn't expecting to just fall head over heels in love with the writing, with the characters, with the story itself, with how just how bleak it all was and how tense and how sad and depressing. It just made it so good. It was so scrumptious. <laughs> it was literally so juicy, but like in the in the weirdest way possible because this is a pretty depressing book. But at the same time, it's just so entertaining because our main character, he really thinks 
he's like the bomb.com and he's not but it's so fun to be inside the mind of a man who thinks he's above everybody else when he's literally not like it's so funny um sorry i haven't even told you what this book is about crime and punishment <sighs> yeah crime and punishment we're following our main character raskolnikov yes raskolnikov raskol raskol yes he is struggling you know he used to be a student he used to get amazing grades but you know something happened and it's just like life is treating him so poorly he has no money to pay his bills he has no money for food he has no money for clothes like he just he's going through it honestly and it gets to a point where he gets so desperate that he starts to concoct this plan to murder a rich woman and just steal all her money and the way that he what's that word the way that he like rationalizes this is that nobody likes that old woman anyways and nobody's going to miss her and also things wouldn't be so easy if god didn't want me to do this that is one of the things that i just love and also it ties in with the can of monte cristo as well because both of our main characters they are doing criminal things yes they are they are not completely good they do have some questionable morals that should be discussed but the way that they rationalize their bad behavior is by saying that if god didn't want this to happen he would stop them and i just love it when men <laughs> I just love it when men go delusional because it's so entertaining and it's so relatable. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> I feel like guys don't worry. I'm doing fine. Okay, I am very fine except for the fact that I related just too much to our main character in crime and punishment overall his battle with his own self-conscious and his battle with you know doing what's right but then also trying to survive in a world that is trying so hard to kill you off and the different characters that we meet in this story the way that they all intertwine together the way that they make this story so rich and so fun and honestly at times it was just hard to put down i am shocked appalled aghast amazed stunned astounded by this new insight into raskolnikov's character oh my god okay yeah there are a lot of instances you know how i said that i love anything that's related to manga and anime i have a lot of moments where our main character actually reminds me of light yagami which is the main character from death note i feel like that could give you a little bit of an idea of what our main character is like because light yagami if you don't know death note it's okay am i really going to go into death note no i'm not if you don't know death note you should definitely look it up because it's one of those classic animes and mangas that you just you have to experience for yourself and it's a classic for a reason okay so yeah light yagami is definitely if he had the ability to have real friends he would really hit it off with raskolnikov this is just so good this whole page is cracked i'm crying Oh, there's also a, a, a couple of Edgar Allan Poe references. Damn, I really popped off with these annotations. <laughs> The main character faints after uttering a single sentence and sleeps his days away in delirium, but he also manages to mastermind first impressions and manipulate the people around him to his whims. Iconic. We love a king capable of duality. <laughs> Listen, um, I can't explain my love for him and I don't feel like I need to, okay? You just, you have to read this book so that you can understand for yourself. He's deranged, your honor. <laughs> and I love him. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is such a fun book. Yeah, reading this book definitely introduced me to a part of myself that I didn't know existed. And I kind of love it because I don't know. It was just, I had never really read a classic like this. And after reading Dostoevsky, I, I'm so interested in reading more authors that delve into the psyche of humans and especially like deranged characters and characters that struggle with being good when the world is forcing them to be bad so i definitely think that reading this first dostoevsky novel opened like this whole new world to me in classic literature and just books in general so yeah i'm very excited to see what other books based on dostoevsky or like you know similar authors to him i can read because if i loved this book so much i feel like i don't know i just <laughs> 
<laughs> it was just such a fun experience. I also buddy read this with some of my friends. And again, it was such an incredible experience because we were just loving every single second of it. And we would send memes to each other. We would be like, I should not be relating to this, but I am. And I don't know if to be worried or if to just go with it. If you haven't read Crime and Punishment, or if you haven't even read Dostoevsky, I would highly, highly recommend that you guys start with Crime and Punishment and give him some love, okay? This book slaps. <laughs> This next book is not going to come as a surprise to a lot of you because I've talked about it quite a lot and I was lucky enough to receive an arc of what is probably going to be my favorite book of 2023 and that is Yellow Face written by RF Kuang. This is the arc. Look at it. She's stunning. I love her so much. So obviously Yellow Face took the internet by storm. I don't feel like I need to talk too much about what it is but if you've never seen this book in your life, Yellow Face is the story of this woman who steals another person's manuscript and then pretends that it's her own. But the problem is that this woman, she's as white as they come and the person that she steals the manuscript from is actually, I think she's an Asian author that was writing about Asian history. When this white woman takes ownership of this manuscript, she starts to rewrite history um, because the white characters in this manuscript were coming off as too mean and too evil. So it's, it's a very interesting insight into the industry of publishing and also just how destructive social media can be it has some very good hot takes. And I think that RF Kuang discusses this in such an insightful and purposeful way, which makes the story so captivating. And it's kind of like shocking at times because in a sense, you know that this is happening, but you don't know how deep it runs. And you don't know how some people that you may not expect are profiting off of these things. This book tackles questions of racism and diversity and cultural appropriation. And I just feel like it's such an incredible read, but it's also so entertaining. And it's kind of like a train wreck that you can't really look away from because it's just insane the lengths that this woman will go through to rationalize her own wrongdoing and the way that she just twists her own narrative so that she doesn't come out as the bad guy. And again, oh my goodness, okay, I did not plan this. Our main character, she also kind of brings God into this. She's like, okay, honestly, if God didn't want this to happen, he wouldn't make it so easy for me. So in a sense, maybe God ordained this whole thing, which again is these two characters also did that. So like, that's kind of insane. Maybe, maybe there's a theme here. <laughs> But yeah, I had such an incredible time reading Yellow Face by RF Kuang and I think that it is such an important read that literally everybody should read and even if you hate it, even you know if it's not your cup of tea, just read it and see if you can take something away from it because I personally enjoyed the heck out of this book. It was insane, it was a disaster, but it tackles some really big and important topics that I feel like should be talked about more. It goes into Stan Twitter. It goes into the toxicity of social media. It's just insane and I loved it. <laughs> the next book that I feel has shaped my 2023 is Anxious People written by Frederick Bachman. I read this with my Patreons and I will forever be grateful to them for choosing this book because I now have a reading vlog that I can go look back on whenever I want to relive my reading experience. I loved Anxious People. I feel like it spoke to a part of me that needed so much comfort at the time that I read this book and I found myself crying with these characters. I found myself feeling everything that they were feeling. Frederick Bachman, again, he's one of those authors that he just knows how to bring the emotional manipulation to the max, to the fullest level. And I know that he's manipulating me, but like I love it because I love feeling so much. You know, sometimes it doesn't pan out. Yes, sometimes I feel a little bit too much. Most of the time, I'm so incredibly grateful that I get to experience these human emotions to such an extent that I feel like these people are my friends and their emotions feel like my emotions because I, I don't know. It made for such an immersive reading experience and 
yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. There are pages where I literally just highlighted every single sentence because I love it. And there are so many insightful comments about anxiety and depression and dealing with mental illness in such a high strung society. And it's just, it was, yeah, it just, again, it just comforted a part of me that needed a lot of comfort when I read this book. And there are so many lines that I would just read over and over again because they were so, they were so real. Like these characters just felt so real. But then it's also hilarious. Like that's the thing. How can a man, <laughs> how can a man, period, how can a man write a book that is so emotionally intelligent and it delves into like the darkest parts of human emotions and it explores that, but then it also does it in a way that is laugh out loud funny and it has you grabbing at your sides because the things that are happening are so absurd, but they're so hilarious. The whole context of this story takes place during a robbery gone wrong and there's like hostages, but then they, they end up not being hostages. But like, I don't know. It was just an incredible book and I can still picture myself when I was reading this book and all the fun that I was having, but all of those fun moments were also coupled with a lot of moments where I was just like wow <laughs> like just like a small tear trickling down my cheek as I was reading certain passages from this book it's just an incredibly insightful and emotional and cathartic reading experience and I loved it. If you've never read a Bachman novel, I would highly, highly recommend this one. And also A Man Called Ove. Those two are great. Those two are fantastic, but this one. Anxious people. <laughs> I just love it so much. This next book is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. I was not expecting to love this book as much as I did because I have read Her Body and Other Parties and it's this collection of short stories by Carmen Maria Machado. And even though, yeah, like some of them were good, but overall it was just like a 3.5 type of reading experience. So when I picked up In the Dream House, I was just like, okay, I don't really know much about this, I just know it's a memoir and apparently it's about an abusive relationship so I know there's going to be like some heavy topics discussed but I don't really know how I'm going to feel about it so let's just go into it with zero expectations and see what happens. I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars, I ended up crying over this book and I ended up relating in ways that I wish I hadn't. <laughs> um, yeah, this book kind of called me out but I loved that about this book because it put so many things into perspective, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it kind of helped me sort through my own feelings and my own emotions and it helped me put into words things that I've felt before but I didn't really have the vocabulary for and yeah, this, this book kind of just rewired my whole brain chemistry for being honest. I did cry so much because I was feeling everything so deeply and basically Carmen Maria Machado had a very abusive and toxic relationship. She sort of tries to unravel their whole experience because she's trying to, I mean kind of, she's kind of trying to make sense of it all, she's kind of trying to understand how it all went wrong, where it all went wrong, if there was something that she could have done and the way that she explores this relationship is by going through different narrative styles i don't know if that makes sense like it's not a linear type of narrative it's more like every chapter is a different concept the dream house is this imaginary house that she shares with this woman in her head so she makes their whole relationship a dream house and then she explores this concept in different ways for example dream house as a soap opera dream house as a musical Dream house as set design, dream house as world building, dream house as deja vu. And in all of these different concepts, she explores different aspects of her relationship. I think it's such an incredibly beautiful insight into, well, I don't know if beautiful is the right word, but it's such a raw and unfiltered view into psychological abuse and how society also kind of plays a part in that. I just think it was brilliant. It was brilliantly done. Carmen Maria Machado, honestly, she created magic with this book. When I was reading this, I just kept being shocked by, by how 
tragically beautiful this book was and how important it is because it gives a voice to so many people that for so long have never really known how to talk about the things that they've gone through because society tells them that it wasn't that big of a deal you know it's just it's all in your head baby like at least they didn't hit you and there's this one very powerful moment i don't know if i'll find it but there's this one moment where carmen maria machado says Sometimes I wish that she would have hit me so that people at least would have believed me and I was I was so I was Like bro, like come on now like dude come on now. That is Horrifying in a terrible in a terrible terrible way. It makes sense and it's just moments like that and different phrases and different like the ways that Carmen Maria Machado just dissects her relationship and she also dissects herself she tries to explore the whys of why she acted the way that she did even though she knew that this wasn't right i i don't know it was i have never read a book like this before and honestly when i say that it rewired my brain chemistry i mean that wholeheartedly so if you can read about books like this if this doesn't trigger you in any way i would highly highly recommend that you give in the dream house by carmen maria machado a try because you will honestly be swept away by the writing by the topic by the ways that she explores certain themes and subjects in the dream house Carmen Maria Machado Next up we have, honestly this one surprised me because yes, I've found different poetry collections that I really like but none of them have been like, oh this is going to live in my heart forever that is, until I read Devotions written by Mary Oliver this, oh my god like, okay, this is probably one of the most beautiful poetry collections that I will ever own and that I will ever read because at the heart of it, Mary Oliver is such a simp for nature and all of her poems are basically geared towards appreciating the beauty that nature is and sometimes like for real sometimes you just need to go outside and touch some grass but <laughs> mary oliver just does such a fantastic way of putting things into perspective and writing about nature and humans and love and human connection in such a way that it kind of reignites your love for humanity and it kind of if you're feeling hopeless i feel like this is the kind of book that is perfect to remind you why life is still good despite everything there are some poems that i would just read over and over again because i just love the way that mary oliver sees the world i love the way that she writes about it when i am among the trees especially the willows and the honey locust equally the beech, the oaks, and the pines, they give off such hints of gladness. I would almost say that they save me, and daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself, in which I have goodness and discernment, and never hurry through the world, but walk slowly and bow often. Around me the trees stir in their leaves, and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches. And they call again, it's simple, they say, and you too have come into the world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light, and to shine. Like, it's just so romantic. <laughs> Honestly, again, I just feel like this book came into my life at the perfect time because I wasn't even planning on buying this book when I did, but I was walking through the Strand. I think it's like 800 miles of books or like eight miles of books either or and there are so many books like it's so easy to just not see this especially because it wasn't even shelved where it was supposed to go and i just saw this white spine and i was like oh that looks interesting and when i picked it up and i saw that it was mary oliver i was like oh my goodness i've been wanting to read mary oliver so why not just buy this mary oliver helped me see the world even through all of its trials and tribulations i still love the world it's kind of like oh my god not to relate everything to anime again but it's kind of like that one lyric in the outro of attack and titan when oh my god how does it go the world is cruel but i still love you <sighs> So I can't think about that. Okay, I, I'm not gonna think about that, but yes. Moving on. I don't own a physical copy, unfortunately, but the next book that honestly 
it healed something inside me. The Miracles of the Namiya General Store. This is a book that I read when I was reading translated fiction for a week and I cried my eyes out. I was not expecting to at all because I had no idea what this book was about. I just knew that someone in my comment section said that I would really like it and so I trusted them and now I owe them my life because when I read this book, I was just, you know, as you do, I had a little bit of millennial ennui. <laughs> I was going through it, I was just going through the big sad, and suddenly I find myself reading a book that reminds me about the beauty in the world. Every time that I feel like I'm hitting rock bottom, I pick up a book that reminds me that despite it all, life is still pretty cool. And The Miracles of the Media General Store is this magical realism story about this store that is somehow connected to the past and people can write letters like asking for advice and then the advice that they get back is so insightful and so beautiful and it kind of feels like that advice is also for the reader like you may not be going through the same situations but there are some words and there are some moments that they just speak to a general sense of emotions and Honestly, it just felt like I got free therapy from this book, which apparently I really need. And I just loved it. I, it's not even that long. I feel like I read it in a day or two because I didn't want to put it down. Whenever I read this book, I felt like I was being comforted. I felt like I was being hugged. I felt like I was being loved. And if you have the opportunity to read this book, I would highly recommend it because it's just so heartwarming and lighthearted and yes it does get sad at times but i feel like that's part of the whole journey that we have to go through and the ending is just so it's so worth it the payoff is beautiful this was a book this was a book that loved me when i needed it and i know that you know obviously books can't love but it's just me and my hopeless romantic brain okay let me live <laughs> The next book on my list is actually a recent read. I read this in July and it is a reread. People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Okay, okay. So the thing is that when I read this book, and this is this has literally never happened to me. That's why I think I'm still so shocked because when I was reading this book, I was going through what is going on in this book, like in my life. Obviously, you know, it's not exactly the same, but so many details were so close to the source material. Wait, who's the source material? My life or the book? The point is, um, the book and my life were basically sisters. They were twins. And it was a very surreal experience because I would read about our main character going through this and then I was going through it and I was like, girly pop, oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of lost my mind while I was reading People We Meet on Vacation and I cried my eyes out. I love this book to bits. It's about these two best friends who go on yearly vacations or yearly summer trips until something happens and then everything changes, their friendship is ruined, they no longer talk to each other. And then this one summer, our main character, Poppy, she decides that enough is enough, I'm gonna try and call my friend, my best friend Alex again, and I'm gonna try and see if we can rekindle our friendship and just get back to how we used to be. And it's not only about their friendship, it's also about Poppy struggling with not knowing how to be an adult and not knowing how to deal with adult situations and just like, you know, still feeling like, like that teenager that never truly found her one true calling, struggling with not knowing what to do with her life. Like, oh my God, Poppy is so me. I'm telling you, Poppy is me. <laughs> yeah, People We Meet on Vacation has definitely been shaping my year in more ways than one. So that's kind of insane. And then we do have a couple of manga that I want to mention because I feel like this year has been marked by so many incredible series that I've been reading. The first of which is Chainsaw Man. I bought 11 volumes, like on one go, cause I watched the anime first, like season one. I finished it in like three days 
and I was so obsessed with it. I was like, I need the manga. I need to know how this story is going to proceed. I love these characters so much. I love the action. I love the character design. I just need to have the manga. So I bought the first 11 volumes. I didn't even think about it too much. And I read all of them in like one day, which honestly I regret because the roller coaster of emotions that this series put me through, I don't think I've recovered from it. I read the series in some of my Patreon reading sprints and there's literally footage of me crying. <laughs> There's literally footage of me crying like a child, crying like a little kid who just lost his favorite toy or who licked his ice cream and then it fell into the street. I don't know, I was just crying so bad and it was so embarrassing. But yeah, it was an experience to read Chainsaw Man and basically if you love Jujutsu Kaisen, if you love... I would say Demon Slayer, but like not really. I feel like if you love Jujutsu Kaisen because of how dark it is and for, you know, the characters, I think you could really enjoy this one. It's just very dark and very violent. And if you're into that, if you love some good action and fight scenes, if you love stories that keep on getting more and more complex, if you love morally gray characters, if you love simping for women, I feel like this is the story for you. So, I mean, it was the story for me, so there we go. If, you, if we have the same type of taste, I feel like you could like this one. The next manga series, of course, of course, it's Attack on Titan. I recently finished collecting Attack on Titan and I, I still haven't read the finale, so I don't know how the manga ends, but just the fact that I will no longer be able to collect more omnibus versions, it just feels like the end of an era. And it feels like I'm going to need to take maybe six to seven months to recover from what this is going to do to me emotionally and also financially, yes. Yeah, Attack on Titan, literally is the reason that I fell back in love with anime back in 2019. So yeah, whenever I think of Attack on Titan, I just have so much love for it. And yes, you know, there is that one volume that I gave three stars, but apart from that one, all of them have been either a five star or a 4.5. I don't know. I just have so much to be grateful for to this manga series because I feel like if I wouldn't have seen the Attack on Titan anime during quarantine, I wouldn't be me. Like, I wouldn't be watching as many animes as I am right now. I probably wouldn't have such a huge manga collection. Attack on Titan literally redirected my life. So I honestly don't know. Like, if I didn't have anime or manga in my life, I feel like 80% of my personality would just be gone. So yeah, Attack on Titan, I have a lot to thank this baby for. <laughs> and then, oh my goodness, I... Listen. <laughs> This is Warakoi. This is Warakoi. Love is hard for otaku. Yeah, this is Warakoi. And this is the only manga box set that I have ever bought in my entire life. And it was an impulse decision, but it was also one of the best decisions that I've made in 2023. I binge watched the first season of Warakoi. I mean, there's only one season. So I binge watched the Warakoi anime and I loved it because it's this story about these people who are just simps for video games and manga. They've never really felt like they've belonged anywhere, but then they meet each other, like they work in the same place. So they start to spend a lot of time together and they start playing and they start dating each other. And it's just so perfect. It's literally a dream come true. And I love the chemistry. I love the bond between these people. It's literally the found family trope for weebs. And I love that so much. I also read all of these volumes in one sitting. I didn't want to do that, okay? I promised myself that I was going to ration these volumes. I was like, okay, there's only six volumes. So what if I just read the first two today and then tomorrow I can do the other two? You know, kind of take it slow so that I can truly savor these volumes since there are no more. But I'm telling you, as soon as I sat down to read the first volume, I knew I wasn't going to be able to stop reading because I love these characters so much. They bring me so much happiness and so much serotonin. And I don't know, I just, I love this so much. I just love them. I love them so much. If you guys are looking for good romance anime with incredible characters that are going to melt you to the ground and they're also going to make you laugh out loud i would honestly recommend watercoy love is hard for otaku also if you're a fan of horomiya i feel like you could really like this one if you like that one anime that recently came out that's called 
um, Loving Yamada Kung at level 999, this is also for you. This walked so that Loving Yamada Kung at level 999 could run. So there we go. We all have to thank Watakoi for all that she did. <sighs> I just, this is such a comfort to me. I love her so much. The final book in this video is not going to come as a surprise for a lot of you if you've been paying attention because um, ever since my friend forced me, she literally sent me the first volume of this series. So I, you know, I felt forced to read it because it was a gift and I was like, girly pop, okay, I'm gonna do this for you but I really don't have any interest. Like, I'm never gonna watch the anime. I'm never, like, it's just not for me. You know what I mean? And, well, here I am eating my words because 2023 literally would not be survivable if it weren't, <laughs> if it weren't for One Piece. I, I cannot even begin to explain the transformation that my life has gone through after One Piece entered my life. I'm currently in volume four of the omnibus versions, so I've read the first three volumes of this. And yeah, I am officially collecting the manga. I know, I know my bank account is going to hate me for this. I'm probably going to be collecting these manga volumes until I'm like 80 or 90 years old. And honestly, the prospect of that makes me so happy, I don't mind. So yeah, I'm officially collecting the manga volumes for One Piece, which yeah, it's insane. There's over like 150 volumes and it's not even over. So like this is for the long haul, babes. I don't exactly know what I got myself into, but it just makes me so happy. And when something makes you so happy and brings you so much serotonin, you really shouldn't question it. You should just accept it. And that's kind of what I've done. In regards to the anime, which I also started, which again, completely changed my life and my brain chemistry. Like my DNA is no longer what it used to be. It's so different. Um, <laughs> so in terms of the anime, I'm currently in episode, oh my goodness. I want to say 454. Yes, because I just finished Impel Down and I'm about to start Marine Ford. So there we go. Um, please no spoilers. I will literally block you from my life entirely if you ever spoil anything of One Piece to me. I love that I can admit when I'm wrong because for the longest time I've always said that I'm never going to read One Piece because it's just so long. And you know, it just doesn't look like something that I would enjoy. And now look at me. I've cried over inanimate objects. I've cried, um, over i don't want to spoil you guys but like i've cried over a reindeer i've cried over a little girl i've cried over tangerines i've cried <laughs> yeah a lot of tears have been shed while i've been watching one piece and now reading it there is such a definitive line before i started one piece and after i started one piece and i don't know one piece just means so much to me it's literally, I, I could go on and on about all of the things that One Piece makes me feel and all of the things that One Piece has given me. It's given me friendships, it's given me people that I can relate to, I don't know. It's just One Piece, it's a lifestyle honestly and I am so happy that I, you know, I'm on the right side of history and I love that for me. Yeah, for sure 2023 would not be what it is without One Piece. And I have so much to thank One Piece for, or Mr. Oda. Okay, this is a terrible idea. Okay, so these, this is just like, I just really, I really wanted to talk to you guys about all of the books that I feel like have shaped my 2023. And I feel like you guys would agree. I feel like, you know, seeing all of these books together, it's kind of a summary of how 2023 has been going for me. And I, I haven't done that bad. I feel like I'm really, really happy with all of these books. I, 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 these books have given me so much happiness, so much serotonin, and I feel like it's only right for me to share them with you guys because I want you to feel what I felt when I read all of these incredible books. Whether you're looking for a romance manga or an action-packed, very violent and bloody manga, if you're looking for romance or classic literature or a poetry collection, I feel like, you know, this is a good way of seeing how 2023 has been going for me. They have made my 2023 survivable. They've made me want to live yet another month just to see if I can find more books like this. So 
I felt like I just really wanted to talk about them because they brought me so much happiness and so much serotonin. It's only right that I share the love. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please remember to say it with me, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It really helps my channel out and it helps me know that you guys enjoy these types of videos so that I can keep doing more of them. I also have a Patreon where I post exclusive content. I host reading sprints and readathons and also a monthly book club. I also recently started a podcast. So if that is something that interests you the link is down below as always i would love to have you join my army of premium simpers once again i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you're still here you're one of the very lucky few to hear me say that i am so proud of you and i love you and appreciate you and i hope you're having a fantastic day so anyways i will definitely be seeing you guys next week bye hey jimmy you nice keep going